calling the. Uh... Oh, Bonnie, there you are. Excuse me. All right, we're calling the uh, regular meeting of the Planning Commission, October 3rd, um, to order. Uh, members of the public wishing to address the Planning Commission on items appearing on the agenda are requested to fill out a speaker's card. I've got two. If anyone else wants to come up and get one, they're actually in the, the lobby. You can fill it out and then drop it off with uh, Sherry at the end. Um, you have, um, we should include your name and address for the record and limit your comments to three minutes or less. Comments uh, must be directed to the commission, not to the audience. And while the Planning Commission is in session, we ask that all in attendance um, are expected to maintain order and decorum and to obey the orders of the chair. Could I have a roll call, please? Chair Quillis, he's absent. Vice Chair Nolan? Here. Commissioners Merck? Here. Jagiello? Here. Corbin? Here. Powers? Here. Lattice? Here. We have Pledge, Pledge of Allegiance. Um, Commissioner Merck, would you lead us, please? Okay, we're going to move on to um, public communications, and this is the t uh, time set aside during Planning Commission for members of the public to address the Planning Commission on items of city business other than scheduled agenda items. Uh, matters at this time may be briefly discussed by the Commission and will generally be refer referred to staff and are placed on a subsequent agenda. Um, under state law, other than for emergency items, no action can be taken at this meeting. So do we have any members of the public that would like to come forward? No? Okay. Oh, yes, here we've got one. I didn't get a chance to fill out my card yet, but anyway, my name is Roger Conrad. I live at um, 11,400 Sulphur Mountain Road, and that's actually not in the city, but I'm a former arts commissioner, and I'm also on the staff of the Ojai Valley Museum. And so what I'm interested in is um, item four, uh, which is the gas station at Bryant. Uh, did, yeah, did you want a, a comment on that one? during the Because that is an agenda, oh, an agendized see, so. item. Yeah, so if you want, you could fill that out and you could um, hand that to Sherry and then I'll call you up okay. when that item comes up, unless it's something different than what's on the agenda. No, that's true. Okay. okay, sorry. So that's no problem. Just feel free to turn it in. <laughs> Anyone else? Oh, nope. Okay. So now we're going to move on to our consent items. Um, all matters listed on the consent calendar to be considered routine by the governing bodies and be enacted by one motion in the form listed. So um, we have one item, and that is our uh, Planning Commission uh, minutes from the September 19th, 2018 um, meeting. Uh, commissioners, anyone have any changes, revisions, comments? No? Would someone like to make a motion? I'll, uh, I'll move adoption of the, the minutes of the meeting of September 19th. Okay, do we have a second? I second. Okay, all right. Merck? Epstein. Yellow? Abstain. Corbin? Abstain. Nolan? No wonder no one was responding. <laughs> no one was I, here. I couldn't figure out why nobody was saying anything. But I'll say yeah, uh, yes. Uh, <laughs> Powers? I can say yes. <laughs> Lattice? Yes. <laughs> this is an easy one. Um, okay, our next um, item is the disclosure of site visits and ex parte contacts. Mm -hmm. Start with uh, Commissioner Merck. Thank you. Um, I visited all the sites on tonight's agenda and have had no ex parte contacts. <clears throat> I visited the sites on all uh, uh, on the agenda. I had the first site over um, what was that on item number two? Was it um, no item number three? The remodel project on Bald Street. I met the owner while I pulled up in my truck and we exchanged pleasantries for about 30 seconds. And then I went over to the HIP and I met the owners there and we exchanged pleasantries again and uh, that was about it. 
And I'm going to abstain from item number two. I mean, um, recuse myself from item number two. Excuse me. Um, I visited or I'm familiar with all the sites and had no ex parte contacts. I, too, have visited the sites and have had no ex parte contacts. I, three, visited all the sites and had no ex parte contacts. Uh, I also visited the sites and have no ex parte contacts. Okay, so we're going to go to our public hearing items. We're going to start with um, item number two, and it's a design review permit DRP 18-009. And actually, let me flip my page here. I'll be recusing <laughs> myself. Number four, got it. Um, Okay, this is for, um, wait, let me just read that quickly. It's from a director's exemption 18-010 for a project in the PL zone, including the following work. It's a revision to an ADA path of travel to main entry of the building, resulting in changes to the parking lot configuration and changes to the approved wall location and a fencing material from wrought iron to CMU concrete masonry unit to match existing on-site walls, stucco and paint to match existing finishing colors. It's located at 214 West Aliso Street. Uh, the uh, parcel number is 021-0-062-070. And could we hear from staff, please? Good evening, uh, Vice Chair Nolan and commissioners. Uh, this item was last before you on September 19th. Uh, at that time, the commission requested some additional information to uh, determine whether the use of the building would meet the definition of community center that is outlined in the ordinance. Um, the property owner, Diana Cyberston, has provided an updated letter, which is attachment E to the staff report, which includes a floor plan and the intent of the uses of the building. Um, we're hoping that the commission considers uh, that letter as well as any testimony that the owner has um, to determine that the use is a community center, which is a permitted use in the PL zone. Uh, the second floor will be a employee residence, which is also a permitted use in the PL zone. Changes to the site plan that were discussed at the last hearing uh, were the removal of the term proposed future sign that was on the low site wall at the intersection. Um, as well as to locate the bike rack that was discussed. So they've located that at the south side of the property um, on the new paving. And uh, I think that were all the changes that they have on the plans. So with that, uh, staff uh, recommends that you hold a public hearing, um, consider the findings and conditions that are outlined in attachment A, and the draft PC resolution, and answer the question whether or not this meets the definition of a community. So. Um, fellow commissioners, anyone have questions for staff at this point? Um, I just noticed in reading the minutes that Commissioner Colsey had a lot of corrections or updates. Yes. Did they all get incorporated into the? Yes, they did. Thing? Thank you. Mm -hmm. Anybody else? Okay. <laughs> I do have um, one item. And I was wondering if you could actually read the definition for the community center. I don't know that I found it in this. I'm sure it was in the staff report, but I somehow maybe missed it. But I just thought it would be good because I know that's sure. basically the, the item we need to address this evening. A community center is defined as a multi-purpose meeting and recreational facility, typically consisting of one or more meeting or multi-purpose rooms, kitchen, and or outdoor barbecue facilities that are available for the use by various groups for community communal activities, for example, meetings, parties, receptions, and dances. Okay, any, any other questions for staff? No? All right, so I'm going to open the public hearing, and I'd like if uh, the applicant would like to come up and give us a little more information or be available for questions. Yes, thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Vice Chairman, and all of you uh, present this evening. Um, I'm Diana Sievertson, and I'm the owner of the property at 214 West Aliso. And um, I want you to know that opening this center is a lifelong dream of mine. I'm at the stage of my life where I wanted to be of service and giving back. And um, so uh, finding this building that was originally as a convent, what, 1959 it was built. Can you hear me all right? I'm okay. Um, uh, and so that it was a... Uh, 
a place of a higher consciousness and that the owners, the Exxons I bought the property from some years back had it as a conscious learning center. So um, I actually sought out two of the nuns that had uh, were originally there. They, they um, came for tea and cookies last year, and um, it was such a delight to meet them and hear what, what it was like to live there. Uh, they were there 30 years. And um, so uh, it just meant a lot to me. It really aligns with who I am and what I want to bring to the community. Um, I've lived here full-time for two years, and I have never lived in a place that felt more like home. I love Ojai, and um, uh, so I feel like, okay, this is my place. This is my home. This is what I'm going to do, open this center for... for um, it, I feel like it's my vision is that it's an antidote to stressful living. So you can have a personal experience of um, your own center of calm and balance and creativity and inspiration and some fun. So um, I think I've outlined a lot of the offerings in the letter. I don't know if you've all read that. I have it with me if you want me to read it or you feel satisfied with what, what I stated in the letter. Um, and then I have any, if you have any questions for me, I'm free to answer. Any questions? Comments. Oh, that's good too. Go ahead. <laughs> oh, I... Um, Hi, Diane. I'm Ray. Hi, Ray. Um, I'm familiar with the previous owners and the well and was there a lot, and I even taught some lyric writing classes for teenage girls there at one time, and um, I love that property, and I, I just, the, my comment is, I didn't, I was satisfied at our last meeting, um, and, um, you know, support um, Chair Quillacy's comments because they were valid comments and I'm glad you wrote this letter and it clarifies it for everyone and okay. welcome to the community. Thank you. Thank you so much. I, um, I just have a few questions and I, sure. I also appreciate the letter and the mm -hmm. floor plan to provide that clarification. Absolutely. So um, it is a little awkward because um, the I th well, uh, let me set that aside for the moment. I, so in the letter, um, you have community events, and so that sounds like that's really something that helps you fit the description of the community center. Um, and I'm just wondering, I'm, what is the frequency? I mean, how do you envision how often that kind of thing would happen? Right. I see it twofold. I see classes and workshops, like for a day or weekend or sometimes a week long. And then I see offerings in the community, like movie nights or a book club or meditation or Byron Katie's work or something like that that would happen weekly. I don't have the name yet. I don't have the hours yet. But that's what I'm working toward in my business plan. And um, do, you, do you think that – how do you feel about um, – allowing some, um, I mean, I think it would be a minor part of the use, but allowing a rental of rooms by community groups, if that's, uh, you know, if they're available, or, I mean, do you see any part, any way to no. integrate that kind of thing? I'm not sure yet. Maybe. I think it, there's, I, I just want to follow my own personal integrity and how it will feel to me and what kinds of groups. I feel like I have to curate the, 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 who's coming in. Okay. So I don't know if that answers your question. I'll know more once I get underway. I probably won't open till February. So I have some time to really get... I and don't know. Is that, if that's, is that something that you... F is the community asking for that? Do you feel that's a, in a... I don't know. I'm, I'm struggling a little bit with the, the use as it's specified in, in the code. And, you know... Uh, in looking at the zoning around you, which is village mixed use, and, and what this little isolated parcel is, I think that this is more for discussion. <laughs> I, I just think that in the long run, it's something that the city needs to look at in terms of, uh, I think, what you'd want to do and uh, what would be better reviewed as under a conditional use permit would all be part of a village mixed use zone. So the, it's it's that's policy stuff, and it's not you know, 
I think it's got a larger, longer-term kind of uh, implications when the st when the city is doing general plan. So I, that's why I wanted to set that aside. Actually. Sure. But um, well, just for my clarification, are you saying you think it's something that is wanted here in the community, or that it's some? Oh, what you're doing? I, yeah. Yeah. No, I think it sounds very sounds very very Ohio appropriate. <laughs> so I was just looking at it more in the technical uh, how what a community what the description of a community center involves and it involves um, it said uh, um, that that it's available for use by various groups for communal activities mm -hmm. so mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. I, I'm just I've just been thinking that about that and mm -hmm. you know um, do you fit this satisfactorily it's so that's okay I would feel I would feel better if there was um, uh, if you if you could commit to some sort of regular community events I think regularity uh -huh. like I see what you're saying once a month or you know something if you have any I'm sure you know I have uh, you know friends that I know want to do art exhibit or want to do fundraiser events or so it's Fine. definitely going to serve okay in that capacity yeah what about can you clarify for me, Kathy, what you mean by a community event? Well, that's how she listed it here. She's listing community events in her letter. And so I'm just taking that and saying, OK, um, she's going to be doing these kinds of things. And as a part of the definition of community centers, you have it's supposed to be a multipurpose meeting and recreational facility. Uh, you know, one more meeting rooms and so forth that are available for use by various groups for communal activities. Does that mean available for rent? It doesn't specify. Okay. Uh, so I, I would say either way. It could be for rent or it could not be. I mean, well, does I, anybody who live in Ojai can constitute a community well, event? When I read it, I think it has that, that <laughs> I think it has that implication, okay. you know, but uh, a lot of times, a lot of community centers do uh, have minimal rents for the use of, com of uh, community center rooms, or sometimes they're free. So. As opposed to like a private function. Yeah, the difficulty so is that sort of that it's a private community center right. in this case. Yeah, I, I was just going to comment that I too had the same question. I, I love everything that you're doing, but it's almost like you have a business you're going to be dictating what the events are and, and who's going to be coming. Um, and I tend to agree with what Kathy was saying, that maybe to some degree or some percent of your time could be allowed for another group. And of course, you could vet them. I think you know they have to be in alignment with your mission and, mm -hmm. and you know what your purpose is there. Mm -hmm. um, but allow other groups to come to you maybe and say, gee, could we I'm sure a you lot know, of people will come do that. That's what I, feel like I have a feeling they will, too. Oh, yeah. I think there's so, a need for that. Yeah. So maybe we can dis discuss that a little bit further when we do our um, commission uh, discussion. Uh, so any other questions for the applicant? I do have one. Um, are you planning to live there or have somebody else caretake? No, I'm not planning to live there. I, I, I found a home, um, thanks to Bill Mellett, <laughs> close, close by. Uh, I was intending originally, but um, okay. um, it, so it'll probably be a caretaker. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Okay, thank you. Um, and then I'm going to open it up. I've got um, to the public. I have two speaker cards so far. <clears throat> and the first one that I have is Byron Katie Mitchell. Hello. I've known uh, Diana for 26 years now. I thought 28, but 26, safely. And um, 26? And I only know Diana in all those years to give. She's one of the most generous, authentic people I think I've ever met. And I I've only known Diana to make life better for more people than I could possibly give a safe number for. What can I say? I 
I think I've said it. I think I've said that. I've, I think I've said it. She's, um, she's an asset. I've seen her as an asset wherever she goes and whatever she does. She's one of those rare people that really get what giving is and the joy it brings her. Yeah, I think, I think that's it. Thank you. I'm so happy to call her friend and, and so happy to see her join our community. Thank you. Mm -hmm. um, next, we've got uh, David Taylor, who will also be speaking and reading on behalf of Kim Maxwell. Good evening. Thank you all um, for this time. Um, I am going to read uh, a letter that Kim Maxwell uh, sent to both uh, myself and to Diana earlier. And then if uh, I'm able, have a few words myself. So from Kim Maxwell, dearest Ojai Planning Commission, I'm sorry I can't be here in person with you tonight. I'm just down the road a piece working with my fabulously brilliant and unruly teen class. We all send our regards. I've been living, working, volunteering, and parenting in Ojai for 25 years. I met Diana Sievertson four years ago when she first purchased her Aliso property from my friends, the Exxons. I remember hearing that she wouldn't be able to put the property to immediate use because she was going to see her mother through end of life. I thought then and now, how kind. I hope we get to be friends when she returns. She has returned, and we are indeed friends. And she is indeed kind, and funny, and honest, and smart. Turns out, a couple of years later, she is the exact kind of neighbor I hope to always live beside. Turns out, she is the exact kind of mission-aligned, community-oriented business owner I hope to always be in partnership with. Turns out, she is the exact kind of friend that I hope to share this tiny town with for the rest of my life. If you have any questions, feel free to call me or stop by the studio anytime. Thank you for the privilege of recommending my friend, neighbor, and fellow townie, Diana Sievertson. She's a gem. Gratefully yours, Kim Maxwell. Uh, so, after... Kim and <laughs> Byron Katie, I don't know how much more uh, a, a simple servant like myself can offer, but I have known Diana for two years. I moved here from New York City about two and a half years ago. I'm the general manager over at Food Harmonics in the arcade, uh, and I also teach an improvisational acting class, and that's where I first met Diana a couple of years ago when I was teaching out of the Arts Center. As a student, uh, Diana came to me and let me know this was one of the first times she was really stepping into something brand new, that it was frightening to her and incredibly exciting to her, taking my class. That years of history with her life had led her to be um, fearful, nervous, uh, and, and not feel safe stepping out into her own, and that in my class, she was hoping to change some of those patterns and behaviors. And in my class, she certainly did so. Um, what I teach, a lot of folks think of improv as being sharp-witted, quick, very funny, very fast-paced work. That is not how I teach. That is not the kind of work that I do. The work that I do is grounded work. It is about being present, being where your feet are, and being emotionally open and available to the people that you are with. And that is a skill that we all hope to cultivate and uh, is very Ojai-centric, I think, that a lot of folks here in Ojai are working towards. She excelled at that. Uh, she was excited to do that work. She came to me and asked for private lessons. She wanted to continue to grow. I have found Diana to be nothing but kind, generous, supportive, inquisitive, engaged, as a human being, she welcomed me to the community as she was herself uh, new to the community. And I have nothing but, uh, but high praise to sing of this beautiful, wonderful human being. Whenever she is in the restaurant, I introduce her to everybody there as one of my favorite people in the universe, and she is. And I hope that you find her to be so as well. Thank you so much for your time. Thank you, David. Uh, I, I only have the two cards. Would anyone else like to speak? 
No? Okay, so I'm going to close the public hearing and then we're going to have our discussion on the item. Anyone, any commissioner would like to start that discussion? Bobby? Well, I, if I'm reading this right, I assume this will be a property that's used similarly to the Women's Center where all sorts of events happen. And I think that those are um, good hot spots, nice spots for the community to come together and to know that there is a place where things can happen. It always is a little bit of life on the street. Um, it's a beautiful property and I, I have no problem with it. You felt me. <laughs> um, I feel similar this week as I did uh, our last meeting where this definition of community center. Um, on the one hand, we're here to to um, adhere to policy and definition. On the other hand, I think some of the uh, definitions are put up walls and boundaries and uh, create conversations that uh, don't always uh, support moving forward in a timely manner and with integrity towards the vision of some of the community members that come forward. That said, I understand that we need to look at a definition and how something is zoned and, and all that happens. But I want to be more, I want to be as much people centric and culturally um, conscious of what we're growing and the future we're moving into together. And some of that requires a looking at policy and definitions. Um, and some of that requires um, having cases be precedences that causes change in the definitions or what gets included in those definitions. If I have any red flag is that um, this the uh, location is in a neighborhood so when you say community events um, you know if you have a big fundraising concert there and there's houses and and you know I I, I, I get who you are not only by what others who have said you know have spoken but you know just you standing before us I, I get who you are and that's not going to happen there um, I you know, I don't think it's an accident that you're the one that purchased that property. It has a history, and as much as um, you called it, it called you. So I'm, I'm good to go on this one. I'm, I'm just looking at the floor plan, and this looks to me um, like something that really fits the definition of a community center. I mean, it's basically just a, a big room that you can have a meeting in and a smaller room that you could have a smaller meeting in. And, I, and we need more spaces like that in Ohio. I can tell you from uh, experience over the last few years, it's, it's very difficult to find spaces where you can actually meet with a group of people. And uh, I, I think the more of this we can get, the better. Um, well, I, I don't, uh, I'm very impressed with what you're, what, who you are and what you want to do. and. Um, I just, I think just as a comment, um, more for staff and, and the upcoming general plan amendment and our updating and the rezoning that might come out of that. Uh, for example, in the VMU district, um, you, even, you can have a community center, you can have, uh, which requires a CUP. So it's more, it would be able to, we would be able to, in a sense, more appropriately review a use as a community center or as a, I think there's other things that would this might possibly fall into that would also require a conditional use permit and all the property around it is all VMU 
the general plan is all VMU. And I just think that that's something that we should look at for the long run. It wouldn't, if you were in business, it wouldn't, even if there was a zone change or general plan, it wouldn't impact what you're doing because you would be entitled to, to continuing what you're approved for. So uh, uh, I'm just looking at it for more from a policy point of view and a, a, a planning point of view. And um, I just throw out this out there for the commission. I mean, I don't, uh, under projects of approval, do, you do is there any interest in adding a condition that would say something uh, to the effect about providing regular community events for a minimum of six times a year or something like that? Um, or, and or making rooms available for, uh, for nominal rents I'll come on comment on that because I actually was going to bring up the same question. I love I love what she's doing, and then I'm kind of hearing a couple different things, um, like from Bobby and and John. Um, where it sounds like you know if it's like the women's club, basically somebody comes to the women's club and says, "I want to have such and such event. Are you open? I'm willing to pay your fee." Whereas in this situation, the uh, Diana, the owner, is going to be kind of you know, regulating and dictating and generating what the events are. So I think what we're trying to do is, if possible, and you know, we don't want to make it onerous, but at the same time, there's a nice balance. How can she have this um, kind of self-generating community center, and then at the same time, offer anyone in the community to come to her and say, I would like to have an event there. You know, do you have an opening? Are you willing to, you know? will pay and, and use your space. So it's kind of coming from two different angles. And that, I think, makes it more of a community center. So I guess maybe could we, th I'm trying to think what the question is for staff um, of how we might look at that. Yeah, I'm, I'm not sure that the definition addresses that, but I think both the concerns I've heard tonight from the last two commissioners, it's really like who's doing the programming that is the property operator setting up programs that clearly have a community benefit. The floor plan looks like a community center. When I read the letter, it's all of these things to me fall within the definition. The only question is who's doing the program? Is it open for groups who want to stage their own events independent of the owner or is the owner saying we're going to show a film, we're going to have readings tonight? I don't think our definition addresses that, but I see where it's a valid concern when you're in a PL zone, because I think that that kind of implies open to the community while it's not clearly defined. I think also the question of the VMU land use designation, that is down the road, that's not on the table tonight, but that would be something up for consideration. So um, my gut reaction, I get where your concerns are going as a planner, what, what, what I look at is, would that even be enforceable? How would we monitor it, even, even if we wanted to? Especially because I get the sense it sounds like the community supports the project. It's just wanting to know, is it open to the community as a whole? And I don't know that we can answer that tonight. And I'm always sort of mindful of, like, you can usually draft conditions, but if you're writing conditions, you know you can't enforce. I dislike having to do that. Um, so if you said three times a year, six times a year, this needs to be open to any community group. I just don't know how we track that, Okay. you know, yeah. even if we wanted to. That makes sense. Um, so any further discussion? John? I'd like to make a couple of points. One is um, I think the community is going to find you <laughs> and ask so if too. they can yeah. have events there. I don't think you're going to have to say, oh, we're open, you know, twice a month. Um, just based on my wife's experience with the Ojai Women's Fund, they uh, have had several events over the last couple of years, and, and they've been desperate to find some space where people could meet, and they were calling everybody that they knew. So I think you're going to have a lot of people just calling you up and saying, hey, we want to do things. And you know, the same thing happens at Bart's Books, kind of across the street from you. Um, you know, my, my daughter is often putting together an event, just kind of an impromptu thing at the last minute, and Bart's has been very generous about saying, oh, yeah, you can have it over here, but it would be great to have another possibility another venue for that the, my other point is the item on the agenda is a design review permit and I don't know that we even have any business discussing the use on the site I'm uh, I'm happy with the way this design looks and the uh, 
what they're doing with the building, and I don't think uh, we have anything else that we can really discuss. Okay. Any other comments? Just one comment. Um, actually, I mean, it is a design review, and I, I agree it's a little uh, unusual probably to get into the change, into the, into the use, but, but the resolution of approval does include approval of a change of use to community center, which is a permitted use. And um, so I think that's why it comes up. And um, I don't, uh, anyway. And that would also be our position that this is, in fact, considering the change in use is definitely within the commission's power because of the fact that the staff has referred that zoning clearance as part of the DRP up to the council, or up to the commission, pardon me. Okay, would anyone ready to make a motion? I'd be glad to make a motion. Okay, thank you, John. Um, I move that we adopt uh, a resolution approving DRP 18-009 subject to the required findings and conditions for the project and CEQA findings determining the project to be categorically exempt. Okay, can we have a roll call? Merck? Yes. Corbin? Yes. Nolan? Yes. Sowers? Yes. Lattice? Yes. Motion passes. All right. <laughs> Enjoy. Okay, so let's uh, move on to our next item. Okay, so our next item is design review permit DRP 18007. This is for the modification to an approved design review permit DRP 17-13 to increase the square footage of an approved addition and add a new covered porch and deck to an existing single level home at 204 Bald Street. Assessor's parcel number is 023-0-142-0-0. And um, can we hear from staff, please? Yes, thank you, Vice Chair, members of mm -hmm. the commission. Um, Staff just has a brief verbal report on this. I think as you can see is this is a modification to a single story residence that had a design review approval, I believe 10 months ago. So this is essentially modifying the previous design approval. Um, as you can see under the pro project description it involves some additional square footage, construction of a deck. Um, and the primary reason this is before you tonight, which is not typical for single family residences, is it's in the village mixed use zoning district, which requires that the planning commission review and approve the project. Um, that's really about it. In terms of the project description, I think it's fairly self-explanatory. Again, a DRP was approved 10 months ago, and this is a modification to that DRP. So I'm not sure if the applicant is here tonight to also explain that, but if they are, I will let them present, and then staff can answer any questions. Thank okay, you. Good. Commissioners, any questions for staff at this point? Uh, Kathy, can I ahead. just ask a question? Uh, be, I, and I apologize because I'm new, but um, so so the original structure is 936 square feet, and they they've now their what's new, I guess, is 895 square feet, something on that scale. So I so so. Is there, what, is there a threshold in the city in terms of when you add to nonconforming, having to conform, just like a 50% threshold, or does that not exist? No, I'm not aware of that, and they're under the coverage still for the site, even with all that's shown. And I think on the, the plan set, the additional square footage is all show, it's showing what was previously approved and now. Right, so but I'm cumulatively. Cumulatively, they're, correct. They're right, what was approved last December was much more than what's coming in now. And in I'm not saying that I have footage. a problem with the project. I'm just, it's just a question. Right. Um, in terms of how we deal with required improvements and things like that. Right, to single family homes, and again, if it's a single family home and one story, Typically, it does not come before any hearing body. So again, this, this is here before you tonight because of the zoning district that it's in VMU, which is w one of the few times you'll see single story, single family residences. Uh, one, just one other question too. So is there, do we ever make a requirement for some sort of pedestrian walkway 
is there is there even a sidewalk easement area for on this property or on this street you had to bring that up huh <laughs> <laughs> it's been Sorry. a big issue all down all that and you can adjust that you no know, I honestly um, and I can have the same excuse as you as I'm relatively new to um, we do coordinate with public works where we have discretionary projects so if there is an easement or a plan to put in sidewalk improvements we would be looking at that in the case of this specific project I'm not aware if there's anything that would be proposed but where there's a discretionary approval we do communicate and would be looking at that as a condition of approval um, ju as just as not not to put any onus on this project I'm just I think that that's maybe another topic for the upcoming general plan update uh, to look at where we want improvements on pedestrian walkways and I'm not even saying it has to be paved maybe there's a house down the street on that street that has a nice permeable surface and uh, across the entire front of their property and um, so I just think that um, not everybody wants to walk in the street so it would be I think it would be good to look at that in the future. No, and, and I, I would say I agree as a, rel a newcomer to Ohio is going down individual streets, the amount of times you have a sidewalk, it then it's narrow, then it disappears, yeah. that that is something we certainly need to look at going forward through the general plan because there's uh, bicycling pedestrian activities higher than normal in this city. Right. But there aren't necessarily consistent facilities in place for that. And sometimes it's helpful to get it to get some of those improvements when you when the opportunity arises so that's that's it's just a con it's a general comment it's not asking for those improvements on this house at this point okay. so I'll make a comment on that also um, because we have discussed this over the years in complete streets and it's actually in our complete streets master plan makes reference to the very issue um, one of the things that we looked at and of course this will be looked at further in the general plan update is that um, we kind of we identified primary streets and secondary streets where we definitely you'd want to have clear access pedestrian access and you know and possibly even bike lanes or markings um, and then in some of the outer neighborhoods we looked at and that we also did this in the neighborhood planning maybe it, it isn't required but there's been this long or ongoing issue and I know John will I think he was referring to it as we'd call it the sidewalk to nowhere where you'd have one house on a block with a sidewalk and then the only chance of the sidewalk being continued would be if one of those two neighboring houses pulled a permit or did something if they never did it would always be the sidewalk to nowhere so it's really more like getting back to that neighborhood planning and identifying you know maybe way on in certain neighborhoods it's safe enough there's not that much vehicle traffic you could actually walk in the street it's fine but in this case, I'm not sure. Um, you know, I you definitely go to the public works. But I just wanted to share that because the discussion has been kind of ongoing over the years. We also talked about a possibility of something like an in lieu fee for every development, whether you got the sidewalk or not, but it could go to funding and say in the downtown core where ideally everyone's going to be walking or want to get to that location for amenity use and what have you. So just sharing. Um, any other questions for staff? No? Okay, so I'm going to open up the public hearing, and we're, if the applicant is here, um, come on up. <laughs> Hello. Uh, my name is Eric Hughes, and uh, we have the cottage at 204 Bald Street. It's a very modest little cottage. We've added a bedroom, and uh, there was a structure on the house that wasn't permitted before when we bought the house so you were kind enough to let us take that down and kind of rebuild it as is so that added to the square footage but it was kind of existing as part of the original house but had to be taken down and kind of rebuilt and what we found <clears throat> over the last number of months while we were working on the house especially over the summertime was that we wanted a covered porch on the side of the house is what that is what we really are looking for, to kind of have a, an outdoor covered porch. So it's kind of an extension of a family room, if you will, on the side of the house that extends that will be an outdoor porch with just kind of a roof above it. And then a, uh, and we thought since we were drawing up the plans for that, we would also 
add a porch to the front of the house. So when you kind of approach the front of the house, there's a porch on the front where you could put a few little Adirondack chairs or something kind of in the front along the front deck. Um, so that's what we're kind of proposing to do. Uh, I don't know that there's <clears throat> anything else really. It's uh, like I said, it's a very simple uh, little kind of cottage bungalow and uh, yeah. <laughs> Any further questions of the applicant? No. No. Okay. I'm. I'm. Anyone from the uh, public would like to come up and comment on this item? No. Okay. So I'll close the public hearing, and uh, we can have our commission discussion. Any I'll questions? make a motion. <laughs> okay. If anybody doesn't, I'll make a motion to approve design review permit DRP 18-007 for the modification of approved design review permit DRP 17-13 to increase the square footage of the approved addition and add a new covered porch deck to the existing single level home in the village mixed use zone at 204 Ball Street. Do we have a second? I second. Okay, roll call please. Merck. I should have said, oh no, go ahead. I was gonna say, was there any, excuse me, <laughs> I had my mic off. Um, any discussion at this point after the second? There's no chance for discussion. We're just rushing right okay. in. Okay, well, I just wanted to make sure. <laughs> okay, one. let's go ahead then with the roll call. Merck? Yes. Jagiello? Yes. Corbin? Yes. Nolan? Yes. Powers? Yes. Lattice? Yes. Motion passes. Yeah, this is like, it's a no-brainer. Moving right along, we're going to go to um, public hearing item number four. And this is design review permit DRP 18 006 and condi conditional use permit CUP 18 004 to convert an existing 1,287 square foot automotive repair shop to a 1,287 square foot yoga studio um, and retail office space located at 915 East Ohio Avenue. The assessor's parcel number is 023-0-150-405. And we can uh, get a report from staff, please. Yes, thank you, Vice Chair, members of the commission. Um, this is a design review permit and a conditional use permit that is for really a change of use, a conversion from a structure that was built and operated as a service station. There's no expansion of square footage. It would be converting from the former gas station use to the current yoga studio use. Um, the majority of the new floor plan, 780 square feet, would be devoted to the yoga studio with uh, ancillary office and some retail space use as well. Um, the changes to the building are largely filling in the roll-up doors with what would be a more storefront system that's more in keeping with the commercial use along Ohio Avenue. Um, I believe the existing color of the building and that will remain the same, so the storefront from the roll-up doors would be the notable building change. Um, in terms of the site, most of the site now is essentially hardscape, different types of paving. Um, there would be some drought tolerant landscaping added more along the frontage of the site so there would be an addition of some landscaping where currently now there's a lot of asphalt. Um, even though there's a conditional use permit for this application that really has nothing to do with the use that is proposed which is a permitted use so it's kind of a wrinkle of the code that that's required because this was originally a gas station so the use permit is really for the conversion from the gas station to the yoga studio. So it can kind of seem odd that there's no real conditions on a yoga studio, but a yoga studio in a commercial zoning district probably doesn't need a lot of conditions. So um, that's the reason for the use permit in this application. Um, that really concludes staff's report. Again, I'd be happy to answer any questions um, if there are any later. Okay, fellow commissioners, no? Okay, I'm gonna open up the public hearing and is the applicant here? Okay, please come up. Hi. That's louder than I expected. <laughs> um, if anyone else wants to speak to, you can fill out a green card over there, but don't feel like you have to. Um, my name's Serge. It's a pleasure to be here with you all this evening. Um, hi, Ray. And, uh, yeah, I just feel really honored to have the... Uh, 
stars aligned to be able to open a, a yoga space in this beautiful town. Uh, my mother, who lives on Fairview Road, is sitting right there, and it's going to be a great way for us to be close together in the coming years. And uh, the vision for this project really came from a, a dear friend named Melissa Bishop, who lives on Reeves Road, who uh, requested me to open a studio here. She felt like there was uh, the lack of one unifying, solid yoga studio that could be more of like a community center, in addition to being a yoga and practice space. Um, that said, I also hope to support all the other studios in town. I, I really love Alana at Ojai Yoga Shala and um, the owners of Arrowheart Yoga. One of them was an old housemate of mine, and they trained with me before starting this. Uh, their space in Miner's Oaks and the Iyengar space and Ingrid, of course, I'd love to support. So, um, yeah, just know that we're doing this as a, as a community project and, and for the betterment of all beings. Um, as is our philosophy, and to have a space for you all to go and breathe. I think that's it for now. Any questions? I actually do. Um, regarding your retail and office, is that affiliated with the yoga, or what are you going to be doing in those spaces? Yeah, good question. Um, so there is, it isn't actually an office space, uh, okay. but the front space of the building, when you walk in like any service station, there's the kind of the the lobby, so to speak, mm -hmm. the same way as if you walk into most contemporary yoga studios, there's a space where you take off your shoes, pay for your yoga classes, and in that space, there's usually also a, a retail offering. Okay. So our retail offering will be commensurate with most yoga spaces in terms of spiritual books, um, maybe some music, and then another thing that we do is we um, travel around the world and collect uh, various types of ceremonial objects from different cultures, uh, yogic cultures and other types of spiritual cultures, and we generally offer those for sale as well. So it could be either wearables or ceremonial items, just generally sacred objects from different places in the world. So it would probably be a, a, a little bit of a conglomeration of some of those things and, um, you know, yoga pants as well and, um, yeah, sage, crystals, all the things that we love in Ojai. <laughs> Right? Very good. Well, thank you. Sure. Oh, I just have one question. Sure, um, are you taking out any of the, I, I, there's, there's a couple of palms on the property that don't look too great in great shape. And I'm just, are you removing those or are they just staying? Just, just a question. Yeah, the, the palms are staying for now. Okay. If, if they become an eyesore, I, I, I will say this, Catherine, I'll be happy to look at them. Okay. Yeah, I've been more looking at the asphalt, but I'll, I'll point my eyes upwards and, and definitely be happy to check those out, too. Thanks for saying something. Yeah, thank you. Yeah. yeah, I just wanted to comment. You have a really nice plant palette. It's low water use. And um, just one simple thing, just and maybe a consideration, would be I know you've got a decomposed granite or a gravel and stone. It looks like maybe an outdoor patio kind of gathering space. Mm -hmm. And then um, in the front or where you've got all the other plantings, you're using decomposed granite for your topping. If possible, and I'm just I'm making the request, and of course, if any of my fellow commissioners want to chide in, I would request that you reduce the amount of decomposed granite and actually mulch that. It's just a little bit better for the soil. Mm -hmm. And if you can, I know there's kind of a trend where people are just using decomposed granite in town or gravel, but it actually it's a lot cooler for the environment to have the mulch and what have you, better for the plants. So mm. just a consideration. But I did want to compliment you on the palette and uh, knowing that we have a water issue in town, that everything you selected was low water use. So appreciate that. Absolutely. Thank you for your comment, and I'll take that into consideration. Okay. And also just have to publicly thank uh, Cornerstone, uh, Steve and Josh over there, really have been a huge yeah. help. So grateful for them. Okay. Yeah. Very good. I, I just want to support what um, Vice Chair Nolan just said regarding the decomposed granite. A lot of people don't think about the, the we think about the heat that's generated from asphalt and concrete, mm -hmm. um, but we don't always think about the um, decomposed granite because we think of it as being permeable, which is a good thing, but we don't think about how it heats up similar to the asphalt and concrete. So there's evaporation there. and. It also isn't good for the plants as well. Albeit mulch, you do have to replace every few years because it does break down. But um, overall, it's a better choice. Great. Thank you.
unless you have anything else to share, I'll open um, it up and we have uh, several speakers' cards. Okay, let's see who they are. Okay. <laughs> All right, number one is Roger Cam Conrad. <laughs> I already um, introduced myself earlier inappropriately. Uh, I want to talk to two interests of mine, one being the aesthetics of the community and the other being the history in the community. And um, I used to be on the Arts Commission and we have several um, uh, installations in the Bryant Circle area. And I really see this particular property to be kind of a gateway to Bryant Circle. And I think uh, the plans that Surge has come up with are really quite beautiful for making this a much better entry to that particular area. And then also the east end of town has had a lot of kind of uh, buildings that uh, I think we'd all like to see improved and here's an opportunity for us to really make this happen. And then also in terms of the history, I, I've been with the museum for about 20 years and uh, I know the uh, Historic Preservation Commission has probably uh, looked into this too, but I think this is also appropriate design to still maintain the history that this was a service station, and uh, I think this is going to be a really good reuse of something, so it still keeps the integrity of the building and everything, but will uh, really be an asset to the community. So, thank you. Thank you. Um, okay, our next speaker is uh, Samantha Garrison. Hi. Um. I'm Roger's new neighbor on Sulphur Mountain Road. Uh, I just, I, my husband and I bought a house there last year, with, have moved in recently with our two daughters. And I've known and worked with Surge for about five or six years in the yoga world. Um, and in that time, had the pleasure of seeing his unique ability to bring people together. Um, he has a great love for community and a gift for making everyone he comes in contact with feel special. In addition, he's incredibly thoughtful, diligent, and devoted to his work and um, his way of life, um, which fits very well from what I can tell so far into the Ojai community. Um, as you've seen with the space uh, that he's laid out along with Cornerstone. He has a gift for creating space and um, community. And I think, you know, in knowing him um, for the last five or six years, to me this, this feels like a project that is actually the culmination of his adult life, like his 20 years, last 20 years. Um, so as a friend of his and an Ojai resident on the east side of town, um, I'd be so thrilled to see this come together. Thanks. All right, we have um, our next card is Patricia Bailey. <laughs> I'm Serge's mother. <laughs> <laughs> Hi, Mom. <laughs> I had the distinct pleasure of being able to say that to uh, Lama, a uh, teacher of Surge's, whom we call Rinpoche, and I had never met her before until this past weekend when she was at um, a retreat called Commune that Surge and Amber Lee put together, which was really a wonderful um, event for three days in the Malibu Mountains. And um, we realized that she has been his teacher for about 17 years. And so Serge has um, been a student in San Diego, a student in a philosophy of yoga. And, and then he started teaching, and then he started teacher trainings um, a few years ago. And here in uh, Southern California and also in Hawaii and <clears throat> Bali and soon in Costa Rica. So I've seen him grow and grow into, I mean, he was always a wonderful person anyway, but I've seen him grow into a, a mighty fine 
young man. And, um, and he said he brought me to, from the East Coast to uh, L.A. in 2011. And he said, Mother, I can't wait for you to go to Ojai. You're just going to love it. And um, and I did, and I visited, so and, you know, and so on. I, after five years in L.A., um, I decided I was coming to uh, Ojai. So I'm speaking from Myers Oaks, <laughs> from the West Side. And um, anyway, I'm really, of course, excited that he's here. He's been wanting to to um, find a place to have a studio in Ojai. So we're all behind him and supporting him and hoping that um, it benefits the community, which I can't imagine that it won't because he already has benefited the community and music and oh, um, yoga and so forth. So thank you and uh, blessings. Thank you. Um, so our next speaker, I've got another card here, is John Elderson. Hello. Um, just to apologize, I'm going to read from notes here. Um, perhaps I should sign up for the improv that was mentioned earlier. <laughs> <coughs> so uh, I'll start. Oh, okay. I'll start by saying a few words about Serge, uh, who I've known for over two years. Uh, on a personal level, uh, I find him to be authentic. He has great personal integrity. Uh, it comes naturally to Serge to think of and to serve others. Uh, if you know Serge, you know someone who wants to see and celebrate your greatness. So I, I consider him a rare individual. Uh, as a collaborator on some more minor enterprises than the one that's the subject of this agenda item, uh, he's been conscientious, creative, and accountable. Uh, as an entrepreneur, particularly in creating spaces and experiences for yoga and wellness, uh, I've found him highly able and necessarily bold in the face of risk, customer first, and a tremendous community builder. Um, as for the project, I'm aware that uh, Serge has worked hard on the plan for the business, including necessary pivots to meet guidelines and regulations. Uh, I speak as a resident of down, uh, first of downtown Ojai and now Miners Oaks. Um, I'm confident with Serge's vision and with the aforementioned strengths on board. Uh, I've no doubt this will be a successful project, offering a great deal to the Ojai community. Thank you. Good, thank you. Um, that's the last card that I have. Oh, let, let me see if I... Um, maybe I got mixed up. Hold on one second. <clears throat> yep, got mixed up with number five. Sorry about that. Uh, Amber Lee. Good evening, Vice Chair and members of this commission. I think I got that right, I hope. It is a true honor to have the privilege to speak before you in City Hall. This is my first time visiting this beautiful building. I uh, didn't even know it was here, a hidden gem, another one in our beautiful valley. I feel so blessed and fortunate to call this valley home. It will be three years soon, and um, I'm a little nervous. <coughs> Again, thank you for the privilege to speak and to share my thoughts and feelings regarding the exceptional human being that Serge Berlioski no doubtedly is. It has been my pleasure to know him for the past four years and work side by side with him as well. He is the founder of a yoga school that you might already know about. It's called Shiva Kali Yoga. I joined the programming to share my work as a massage therapist. And each year we gather to support groups, people coming from all walks of life, all across this beautiful planet, to learn, to heal, to grow, and to connect. Through these years of working together, I have been witness to and have experienced and learned from the exceptional qualities that Serge undoubtedly shows in terms of responsibility. He's 
always responsible for everything. A huge burden to bear when it comes to running a business, no doubt. Uh, he is exceptional in his honesty and his ability to communicate and his ability to care for others and most of all his compassion and his dedicated path to being of service to others. This is evident in the hundreds of students that are so joyous to call him a teacher. This is apparent in the way that he cares for his mother and at one time his father until he passed. And this is apparent in our friendships that we cultivate together. A few of us are here present in this room. Many of us sprinkled across this beautiful valley from east to west and all around the globe. There are friends that truly call on Surge to be that listening ear and to uh, be that guidance when it's in need. And so, of course, it's a just supreme blessing that this is even an opportunity for him, knowing that this is a lifelong dream, having been a teacher for 20 years and having been really a student of life, learning all the things that he's been gathering along his path, to really be of service in this way and to have a place to call home for these teachings to be shared. Now, I know that there are other yoga studios in Ojai, and I myself, having moved to Ojai, moved to Ojai uh, probably for similar reasons as most, uh, perhaps, newcomers, is really the healing quality that this Ojai Valley provides and inspires in all of us, or I'll speak for myself. When I moved here, I was a little surprised to find that the yoga studio, um, or, or really the spirit of yoga, oh, this is timed? Yes. Oh my god, so sorry. Am I over time? You're over, but if you can just wrap okay. it up. Okay, my can, last you're point, welcome. thank you so much, <laughs> I'm so sorry. Um, my last point is that um, I know that y yoga was truly alive not so long ago, but perhaps some time ago in Ojai. There used to be festivals I've heard of. There used to be really active teachers that I know of and had the privilege to meet who are no longer practicing as actively. And so really what this space at 915 East Ojai Avenue provides is an opportunity to be that place for healing and for community in a really responsible, grounded, and moderated way. And I hope that you will consider supporting this dream as no dream can manifest without the collaboration of many of us. So thank you for your time and hearing me tonight. Good night. Thank you, Amber. Um, would anyone else like to speak? No? OK, I'm going to close the public hearing, and we can have our discussion. Commissioners? Well, I think it's an exceptional project. I, I do love the architecture of it. I love the integrity of keeping the historical nature of the service station there. Um, I, if you go by it now, it's just kind of awful. And so I was there today looking at the building and looking at what's planned here. I think Steve Foster and uh, Josh did an incredible job. And of, of course, in collaboration with the owner. And uh, I think it's going to really be a bright spot on that corner, and uh, I'm re really excited about it. Any other comments? Discussion? Um, I have a comment. Um, I concur with Roger that um, upgrading that corner going into Bryant Circle is needed. There's a lot of buildings there that um, could use a facelift. And um, um, on a personal note, what's fun is one of my favorite records by Jai Utal is called Shiva Station. So um, <laughs> I'll probably be calling this Shiva Station. <laughs> Any other comments? Anyone like to uh, make a motion? I'll make a motion. Okay. I'll make a motion to approve design review permit. DR 18-006 and conditional use permit CP, uh, CUP 18-004 to convert an existing 1,287 square foot automatic automotive repair shop to a 1,287 square foot yoga studio and retail office space located at 915 East Ojai Avenue. I'll second that. Do you have a roll call, please? Merck? Yes. Degiello? Yes. Corbin? Yes. Nolan? Yes. Powers? Yes. Lattice? Yes. Motion passes. Congratulations and welcome. <laughs>
unless you want to. Okay, so um, now we're on to a public hearing item number five. This is for a conditional use permit CUP 18-003 for the serving of alcohol. Conditional use permit CUP 18-005 for live entertainment and design review permit DRP 18-010 for outdoor dining at Hip Vegan Restaurant in a village mixed use zone located at 201 North Montgomery Street, AKA otherwise known as 316 East Matillaha Street, uh, assessor's parcel number 021-0-113-2802. And can we uh, hear from staff, please? Or I should say may we hear from staff, please. <laughs> Uh, commissioners, uh, the conditional use permit requests, as you discussed, are for the sale of alcohol. Um, the live entertainment that is to be proposed as unamplified acoustical performances or um, music that would be on speaker through speakers on the patio, uh, and then a design review permit for patio furniture such as wooden tables, benches, uh, outdoor heaters, and market umbrellas that are a natural canvas color. Um, the <laughs> sorry, the um, ordinance speaks to uh, assembly uses um, and regulates the proposed um, or the allowed hours to be prohibited between 11:30 p.m. and 6 a.m. Uh, staff has recommended a condition of approval for the live entertainment to be uh, regulated between 10 a.m. and 10 p.m. consistent with hours that we have used for other outdoor dining venues with live entertainment. Um, the outdoor entertainment is really ancillary to the restaurant use. It's not intended to be a concert venue. It's more of mm -hmm. ambient music in the dining area right. is what the proprietor, Ben, has informed me. Um, we have received a letter from an adjacent neighbor at 310 East Matillaha who is not able to be here tonight um, with concerns regarding noise from the outdoor entertainment as well as um, the combination of uses. Uh, Sane Center is sharing that same building and does have assembly uses within the building that could happen at the same time as there would be an outside performer at the restaurant. The restaurant use and the same center use were approved under a previous DRP, so we're really just looking at the outdoor uses, the alcohol sales, and whether or not the outdoor entertainment is appropriate. Mm -hmm. Okay. Any questions for staff at this point? I have a Kelly, go ahead. Um, oh, yeah. um, I wonder why mm -hmm. it's necessary to obtain a secondary permit for a full service restaurant to serve alcohol, aka beer and wine. It seems to me that, that reasonably speaking, any restaurant that's what I describe as full service, meaning has the facility to prepare food from scratch, should have to come for a second permit to serve alcohol. Alcohol should be served with food, and it seems that that, I would love to see that streamlined so that perhaps it was a little bit simpler for a business to conduct, conduct itself in this town. Um, I also want to address the issue of the entertainment. This isn't really a staff question, it's a discussion question though, but procedurally, um, we already approved the um, change of use on this building. And in that meeting, the outdoor dining was shown. So are we just approving furniture tonight? Is that okay? Because I, I wasn't sure why it was that we had to approve it again when we've already done that. I don't believe a conditional use permit application was approved at the time of the design review permit that legalized the change of use of that facility okay. to include well, the restaurant. Okay. Well, again, I'd love to see that whole thing streamlined so that a, so that um, 
um, an applicant doesn't have to come back for four separate permits. I think it would be um, in everybody's best interest if that, if that whole thing could be streamlined a little bit um, and just make it simpler for everybody. It seems like if we're approving furniture, that could be a director's decision. I mean, what would we say no to? Something neon purple shaped like dinosaurs that makes music? I, I don't know. I mean, it's not necessarily my taste, your taste. It's furniture. And if they want to get a new bench or, you know, add a lamp, I mean, do they have to come back for another permit? It just seems like it's too much. Amen. So I would love to see this process streamlined. And I will address the entertainment issue in discussion. Okay. okay. Kathy, yes, I, I just um, I have a question about the parking. So uh, in the staff report, um, it's saying that there is no additional parking required for outdoor dining. And I just want to confirm that is true. That is correct. So even though this is providing 47 seating for an additional 47 people, there's no additional parking requirement. The parking ordinance clearly states that outdoor dining requires no additional parking. Because inside, it's seating for 36. Correct. So this is more than doubling. I, okay. I agree. Okay. Um, and so what's already been approved um, is eight on-site spaces and 20 off-site spaces. So where are the off-site spaces? I can't speak to where those are exactly. <laughs> um, the previous use was Theater 150. So the- Oh, okay, yeah, yeah. The, uh, when that was established, it was legally non-conforming to parking and had 20 established off-site parking spaces, I believe in a public or adjacent lot, and eight on-site for Theater 150. Um, when Sane Center and the restaurant use were established, they reevaluated the parking, and this combination of uses required eight less parking spaces than the Theater 150 use. So we actually are getting closer to compliance. However, no additional parking is required for the outdoor dining. So I, I don't know if that adequately addresses your question. That, uh, that, okay. Yeah, I just wanted to confirm that. So, so there are is there uh, any kind of a written agreement about the 20 off-site spaces? I believe so. It was done at the time of a subdivision. There was four parcels were split a decade ago or so. Okay. okay. That's all for now. Yeah. I have a question for staff. Um, this is in regards to um, music or sound through speakers. Do we have any other... Um, properties downtown that actually have that set up? Any other restaurants or something similar? For amp amplified, for amplified music? Mm -hmm. Out, the question being outdoor amplified music. Yeah, yeah. No Savita? It was my understanding that the music was not to be amplified right. here. It, it's but it's not, through a, it's through a speaker. I mean, there was... No, it's not. No, if it's no. not amplified. It's just, oh, okay. not I'm sorry. Amplified. I thought yeah. that I, I read that it was... Um, no, not amplified. Acoustical music plus music through a speaker. If it's recorded, right. it could be through a speaker. But Correct. If, if there's a live performance, right. it would not, it would Correct. not be Okay, amplified. I knew that part. Correct. But I, I think what I was referring to was the recorded music through a speaker. Do we, is there... Well, it has to come through a speaker. No, I know it does. But <laughs> my question is, is there another business in, you know, in Ojai that has done something or is doing the same thing? Topa Topa Brewery. <laughs> oh, the one that hasn't opened yet. I'm not aware of, but... Oh, okay. No, no So Cafe has outdoor speakers. And they play music? Ramble. Tipple and Ramble. Tipple and Ramble. Okay. I'm just, just trying to get some context here. Okay. And then I guess my other question to staff would be, once again, the hours are regulated, and if the music was too loud, somebody would call in a complaint, and then that's how it would be regulated. Kind of complaint... Dress, it would be sub okay. subject to the noise ordinance. Okay. All right, good. Any other, oops, excuse me, any other questions? One comment yeah, there, Chair, Vice Chair Nolan. 
both subject to the noise ordinance and subject to the proposed further narrowing condition because the noise ordinance has a wider range of hours. Right. This, the proposal is to narrow that to 10 to 10, 10 a.m. to 10 p.m. That. Okay, very good. Um, so if there are no further questions, I'm going to open up the public hearing. And would the applicant like to come up and um, present? So much has already been said. Um, I did write some stuff down here. Uh, first, hi, my name is Ben DiCiacchio. Uh My wife, Marissa, and I are the chefs and owners of Hip Vegan. Uh, it's been about a year since I was here last asking for approval for Hip's new location. And we are now in the final stages of completing the new build out. And I'm back now to ask for your approval for outdoor dining, beer and wine services, and for the hosting of live music events. At HIP's first location, the community supported us with such enthusiasm we couldn't believe it. We were voted by Ojai Valley News the best vegetarian restaurant every year and were given the inaugural Taste of the Town Award by the Ojai Chamber of Commerce. I'm incredibly grateful for all that Ojai has given to HIP and one of the ways I can show my gratitude is by making this new HIP even better than the first. One of the items on the agenda today is an outdoor dining design review. Our new patio is beautiful, I think. Uh, Lawrence and Jane and the rest of us have worked very hard to make a pleasant space for people to sit and relax and enjoy a meal. The tables are simple picnic style Douglas fir wooden tables sealed with the same oil that we used on the doors and windows. The bases of the tables are painted to match the trim of the building and the proposed umbrellas are to match the color of the stucco. Uh, we even planted a new sycamore tree to provide some extra shade. Uh, the next agenda item is our beer and wine license. I actually was surprised to find out that I needed to get special permission for this. Uh, I think at the first tip our zoning was different and we just were able to get a signature on our application and move forward. Uh, serving beer and wine and kombucha will not turn hip into some kind of rowdy bar. It's something that we've always offered and I just think it's nice for people to have the option to have a relaxing drink. I think it adds to, it adds something to the restaurant. Uh, the last item today is our live music. This is something that customers recommended over and over and over again at the first tip. Uh, good Ojai restaurants usually have really pleasant outdoor areas and we have uh, great weather here and we like to eat outside. Local restaurants will often be empty inside and full outside. There are many restaurants in town that feature local musicians to add ambiance to their patios. I live on Creek Road just down the street and I often walk to Harvest to have happy hour drinks and snacks and I like to listen to the local musicians. I think it adds a lot and I want to be able to offer the same service to our customers. Uh, for the last year we've really been thinking obsessively about how to make the best restaurant we can make for this particular spot. The items that we are discussing today are all very important aspects of the restaurant that we have designed and the restaurant that I think Ojai wants to have, and I hope you give us the opportunity to offer these services. Thank you. Any questions for the applicant? No, I, I just want to, I don't have questions. I would just like to comment that um, in addition to having beer and wine with your food, music is wonderful. And I think that places that will offer that will be definitely a bonus and an asset to the town and the outdoor dining with a little bit of music i don't foresee disco music raging at all hours <laughs> of the night i don't necessarily think that's appropriate but uh, it makes for a town that's a little more comfortable to walk through alone at night than ojai is now because it's very dark here and these pools of activity will help make our town much more comfortable, lively, vibrant, and feel a lot safer to walk through by yourself at night. It's a little creepy here at night. So I look forward to that corner being lit up. Um, I hear Heather and Lisa's concern. I, I, I know they've moved into the gallery, but this outdoor dining is on the opposite side from them facing the street and I I can't imagine that it will be 
something that will be uncomfortable for them. I don't know, I'm a little deaf, so I never hear it anyway, but um, I would assume that, that setting parameters like hours and the limit of um, amplification should be enough for restaurants to be allowed to do that in town. I think it's a plus. So I support you, and I support making that easier for other places to do it as well. Thank you. There's no further questions. Thank you. And I'm going to get to the speaker's cards. Um, the first one that I have is Ray. Hello. Uh, it's really nice to be here. I'll try to make it quick because uh, I think we got to wrap this up because I think it's a great thing. Uh, one of the things that I, I think that we all are, are worried about is people complaining about things that we do that are fairly new. And I think that education, when people are educated to what's, what their problem is, like the people that did complain, I think that um, once they see what we're doing and, and they, they communicate with us, uh, I think it's going to be like a family affair because both of the companies will probably have related things. Like they'll have an art gallery show and then they'll go to the restaurant. And it's, it's really what, what this is about. It's connecting the dots. And I just want to let you know that I saw like 10 people today that I knew. It's number 11. <laughs> and when you have a, a city like this, it is the warmest thing when you get to see people you know. And everybody watches out for each other. And since I started working for uh, Aubrey, I'm actually going to be doing the sculpture at the center. Uh, I've learned a lot. And, and this center is about learning. And the restaurant is about education of eating medicine instead of eating poison. And we actually, as a, as a city, could be one of the best educated and vegan and nutritious places because we have the, the biggest healing center anywhere uh, in California. There's more healers here than anywhere else. And in fact, one last thing I gotta tell you. Today I learned from uh, the owner of this property that if you eat a big steak and then you eat something that d digests slow, you're gonna have trouble. Because that digestion, it's all about how you eat and how you eat the right foods. And this vegan restaurant is gonna put it down in perfect order the way we should be eating as sapiens. So I just want to let you know that uh, these are really good people and uh, we have a lot to learn from them and I think it's going to be fantastic. That's all. Thank you, Ray. And let's see, we've got uh, several more cards here. Uh, next, Peggy Lucera. Hi, my name is Peggy Lucero. I live at 386 Avenida de la Vereda, but um, I consider Ojai my home because I um, have moved many, many times. Fortunately, I've landed many, many times. Um, I, did, I think I don't want to take too much time because it, this is an incredibly beautiful place. I think you're all resonating to what um, Aubrey and Joe and Ben and Marissa are trying to do here. One thing I want you to know that was really exciting for me today was that the border of the property is all bay trees, bay leaves, edible. It's just gorgeous. Uh, it's going to be a beautiful place. We'll all meet there. Um, the only thing I would like to add is that Lisa and Heather are friends of mine. I played ukulele at the porch gallery for several years with Rob Frame and the Ojai Ukulele Orchestra. Um, I've gone to many of their gallery events. I love Beto's Chocolates, which they just put in. And I've spoken to them. I, I appreciate their concerns. They live there. It's Ojai Village Mixed Use. And my feeling is that this is Ojai. It's small. If we can't calibrate against each other here, cooperate and you know find a way to communicate and really live together then it's not going to happen anywhere I absolutely believe that can happen and um, anyway thank you that's plenty 
Thank you, Peggy. Uh, next, we've got Aubrey Balkind. Hello, everyone. Um, I walked past, past that building one day, and I thought, this is a place that really needs love. It was a, standing on the corner, just forlorn. And I talked to a few people, and they said, well, you want to buy a um, funeral home? People die there. <laughs> and I said, that's not, depends how you look at it. That might not be death. It might be transition. And um, so we've worked very hard for the last year. It's been much more difficult than I thought. But we're ready to open soon. And um, Ben and Marissa, uh, for the same thing that's happened to many people, has happened to me when they lost their lease and had to shut down. Uh, there was a big hole in people's lives about where they went to eat. And it's been a very difficult year for me not to have hip to eat in. And I'm so looking forward to it. They're going to be there three meals a day instead of, and every day of the week instead of maybe a half the week before. Um, living, uh, what we're leading, jo Joe and I, is sane living. And there's a reason we're together, is that we, we're about how to heal yourself. And healing yourself actually starts with food, because it is medicine. And uh, the medicine we have is poison. In, in general, there are certain times you need some medicine. But if you, re you really ate well, we wouldn't be unhealthy. Um, music is important. It is the most emotional part of a movie that you go see. It's, you know, there was, I, I had a business that promoted movies. And we saw movies without the soundtrack or with a different soundtrack before we, because we had to work on it beforehand. And movies, music is incredibly emotive. In fact, music talks to people when they're unconscious. Harvard Medical Institute talks about that. So we're sensitive to it, and Ben is very sensitive to the music. Um, he had been even in the old hip. So I know Ben will provide us with wonderful opportunities of music that we'll begin to love and enjoy. Um, the, the, at that area of the town, when I came here to the first presentation, was, was crying out for what the planning mission said was that they wanted to expand the downtown, not just be on the main street, so that the other stores could have foot traffic that went by and uh, they could increase their business. The other was what Ray said was is that we have the highest per capita part of uh, 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 healing population. One of the big problems in Ojai is lack of jobs. We talk about cost of housing, but if people earned a decent living, they would be able to afford the houses more than they do right now. So the, sa the Sane Living Center is really tied in quite tightly with Hip Vegan, and we understand this process of trying to bring healing, make uh, Ojai a healing mecca, as well as Sane Living has the facilities in its events areas to improve the ability to teach. And the other main thing, which is education in Ojai, being Excuse me, Aubrey, your time's Thank up, you. but I'd like, if you just want to wrap it up, that'd be great. I've got a couple more cards. Okay.
Thank you, appreciate that. We're very pleased to be here, and we look forward to serving everybody as best we can. Thank you. Thank you. All right, next I've got uh, Jane Carroll. Hello, I am Jane Carroll. I was the designer of this project. Um, we came in last year with the design review, and I really appreciate the exhortation to streamline this process. We did talk at that stage about the outdoor dining, but we didn't have plans for it then in terms of tables and landscaping because we were in a hurry to get the building um, started. Um, I think it's an incredibly good project. I think it's going to be wonderful on that corner. I think it's going to really add some kind of revitalization to what had previously been a very dull um, area there. And I think Lawrence has done a great job with, uh, with the landscaping there. And it makes no sense to have a healthy mm. restaurant like that without being able to go outside. <laughs> so uh, I would really appreciate if this process could get streamlined more. Um, but it's an extremely good project. And it's definitely not going to be a rowdy corner. It'll be a tranquil, pleasant spot for everybody to spend time in. Thank you. Thank you, Jane. Uh, next, I've got Catherine Barron. Hello. I don't work with Hip Vegan, but I do work at Ojai Harvest, where we do serve wine and beer until, I think, <coughs> 11 p.m. And as far as, as long as I have worked there since February, we have not, to my knowledge, gotten any noise complaints. We have music events and the most resounding feedback that I have heard is appreciation. And I'm 25, and I know most of my friends would also super appreciate another venue for music and places to go in Ojai for culture. We're renowned as like an arts and culture town. This community could definitely use another venue for that. Thank you, Catherine. And then next I've got uh, Bill Warwick. Well, Commission, just a couple comments. One, just for the record, if you look at that Matillaha corridor in a one block uh, distance as the crow flies, I want to add to the number of venues that was listed earlier in testimony. Uh, don't forget Lavender Inn. Don't forget the Vine, as well as Porch Gallery itself, which has regular assembly events. Um, they do not sell alcohol, but they serve alcohol at those um, events that include live music often. So this is really very little different from what is going on in those close by areas, which I think is, you know, should be put out there for the record. Uh, as well, uh, I think the stipulations are extremely, extremely productive in terms of the overall fabric. Uh, I, I, not going to take issue with anything anybody said so far. Uh, I think it's been extremely well well put and, and a good addition to the testimony. Um, I just want to do two shout outs. Uh, number one, I've heard a lot of positives from the Arts Commission people about their working with the Arts Commission on their public art piece. Everyone is very excited about how that will additionally add to the, to the fabric of the community uh, that they're attempting to uh, accomplish. And second of all, on a personal note, I can't wait for the vegetarian ribbon to be back. I hope it's still on the menu. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Bill. Uh, would anyone else like to speak? Oh, sure, go ahead. <laughs> sure. Uh, my name's Joe Newlight. I'll try to be quick, um, just because my name's been bandied about a little bit. I moved here a year ago, just a recent transplant, with my family. And uh, in all the time that we were looking for houses here, which was too long, we always made a point to stop at Hip Vegan when we were in town. And at least half the time, it was closed. Mm -hmm. And when we finally moved here, it was closed for good. <laughs> which was disappointing. And when I found out that it was reopening, I actually wound up getting involved and, and working with Ben and Marissa to help bring it to fruition. And the one thing that I can tell you in that process is that this restaurant is very much an expression of who they are. And, and as it's been dialed in throughout this process, what they always touch back to is just recreating the magic that they had, but being open you know, more often so that you don't have to arrive to a, a locked door. And, uh, and anyone who knows Ben and Marissa know that they're very kind, very gentle, 
very low key people. And I think that's what the expression of this restaurant is and is going to continue to be regardless of everything that's granted here tonight. So my support. Thank you. Thank you, Joe. All right. Um, I'm going to close the public hearing and uh, open up our discussion. And go ahead, Chester. Well, I don't have much to say. I'm totally in, uh, in favor of this project. I just want to make a motion unless anyone else wants to say anything. I just want to make a comment, too. But I did. Oh, go ahead. You go. Sure. I have a, I'll have a comment, too. Okay. I just wanted to say I did ask the question at the beginning about the music, not because I'm against the music. I just want to know. And I wanted to say I think this is a great project. I'm really looking forward to the restaurant opening again because I, too, can't wait, and I was a past customer. Um, but I'm also really excited. All the projects we've had tonight, you know, even including the house renovation, these have been great projects, and it's so exciting to see three of them that are people are coming in. They're talking about healing and this really good energy for our community, new business, employment. So, you know, I'm glad I got to chair tonight. So I just wanted to say that I'm, I'm in favor of the, uh, the project. But go ahead, Kathy. Okay, so I, so I love HIP. I, <laughs> I just want to make that really clear. But, you know, I, no matter how wonderful people are and how much we love them, I still think there's, there's certain basic things we need to be looking at and being careful about, and that's kind of where I'm coming from. So... So when you, you, so I'm asking, probably asking the same question again. So when you required 28 spaces, there was no, absolutely no consideration for the fact that there would be 47 additional people coming to that restaurant. Is that correct? That is correct, because the code does not require outdoor parking for it. Okay. I really have a concern with that. You know, I don't know where these people are going to park at times, and I just, I really have a problem with that because of the scope. We're not... We're not talking about adding a few tables to the outside. We're talking about more than doubling the size of the restaurant with no consideration for park, additional parking. And um, I don't know, you know, there was on the environmental impact report, um, it's exempt, but, you know, in a way, I mean, there was some impact for parking here. There is outside of that. So... Uh, so this is what I'm, I guess I'm mostly concerned about that. A little concerned about amplification. Um, if, if, if we're going to approve this tonight, maybe condition number five could say all live entertainment shall be non-amplified, period. Amplified music shall comply with the noise regulations. Um, and I'd also like to add a, a condition about maintaining the hedge height at either 32, 42 or 36 uh, inches. I don't think. They called I mean, it out at three feet on the plan. OK, does that mean it's always going to be maintained at that height? That's required. Yeah, there is, a, there is a code provision when you're essentially in a setback or along a property line for a 36 inch height, whether it's a fence, hedge, or a wall. So I think, so I mean, I, I adore HIP, but. Um, <laughs> I just think the scale, the scope, the amount of outdoor dining and what's, what's happening there without um, any parking is a, really a concern. So, If I could just say one yeah. thing on, again, I, I think that your the issue on parking is going more globally with we need to look at parking. Um, as somebody who's relatively new here, we do. Because I think, especially the downtown area, this comes up where we've either had to do variances because the code can be very excessive with what's required, or in this case, you have an issue where clearly you're, you're adding seats, but the way the code currently reads, we're not requiring parking. Um, so I think that's something, again, not only through the general plan update, but there's a recognition that we need to be looking at parking and figuring out what do we want to have, particularly in the downtown, right. where we're getting more tourist base uses, restaurant uses, things like that can, that can have high demands and impact residents. So um, this meets the current code. Um, but again, that's something I think we need to have a discussion on outside of one particular use. Yeah. And I, to be clear, I'm not opposed to things, you know, innovative concepts, joint use parking or offsite parking in lieu parking, you know, anything like that. I, I think that having a comprehensive palette of options to deal with parking is, is going to be useful. Um, 
So I, I still have a concern. <laughs> Well, actually, um, we're, we're in our discussion. The public hearing is closed, so let me. Yeah. Um, I just wanted to make one comment, and this is in regards to um, well, parking. It could have potentially affect parking. Is I know that we have. Um, it's not listed, but I believe it's, it, it is required per our code for commercial properties to include bike parking. Yes. And I know I've asked to have that included in all of our. Um, staff reports and the conditions, but I noticed it hasn't been there. Number one, I missed and forgot to say it for the yoga studio, but studio, but assume, I believe even though it wasn't listed, it would still be applicable to that, lot, to that project, so I want to make sure that that happens. But also, I don't believe I saw it on this project, and I want to make sure that there's a case. Was it on there? It is, but it's not in the actual seating area. It's the other side of the Okay. Okay, so it might have been on the previous plan. I just wanted to make sure. So I just wanted to throw that in because we, and I hear what you're saying about the parking, but if we could create the environment for a friendly pedestrian and bicycle community, we potentially can help to cut down on traffic, parking spaces, and what have you. So I just want to make sure that that does get included on the commercial properties. I think, Bobby, were you, you had your hand up? Okay, Chester, go ahead. Well, I, <clears throat> I believe the property has, uh, in its location, is very similar to all the restaurants in that area. None of those restaurants have parking downtown. Um, you, you, that's it, the point. So it, it's not that you don't need parking, but you, you can't put the burden on one, com on one restaurant to supply all their parking when no one else does. But the reality of it is it's the walkability is there. It's, it's relatively downtown. You can find places to park and walk. And, and walking through Ojai is a nice experience and a fun experience. And um, although I, I'm in favor and I pushed for re the, the review of the parking ordinance that we have. So I hear what you're saying. I don't see uh, penalizing this particular uh, group, um, and especially for what they're doing, is is completely to the uh, to code, and and the walkability is there. It's it's exists in its current location. Uh, my my only my concern really is for the amount. You have thirty six seating inside and forty seven outside. I don't know of too many other restaurants in town that are that that. Well, um, to speak on that, I've scope, noticed if you. And I, so and and uh, oh I, well anyway that's I, that I, it's it's if they were as, as I said if they were coming out with a few you know a couple of two three four tables out there I I don't think I would be saying the same thing and I'm also not somebody who goes around complaining about either the traffic or the parking in town because I can always find a parking space right, right. so I'm not coming from that but I'm just I just it it's the scale of it really. And the, the doubling of the number of patrons without considering impacts. So, I'd like to say that you know, if you use Nocciola, for example, as an example of indoor and outdoor seating, almost everybody sits outside. Mm -hmm. The inside part of the restaurant is almost always. That's what I was going to say. Mm -hmm. Sparsely populated, mm -hmm. and this if is you, new. And this if is you new look and at we're and if you this. look at the p cars that are parked around there, they really don't take up very much space. They have no parking on site. Um, I I would be surprised if that were an issue here. But I think addressing what Chester said, we did say that we needed to look at in-loop parking fees mm -hmm. and parking as a whole concept, not individually per restaurant as they open up, but as a town-wide approach to parking, and that's really how it needs to be addressed. It's not really appropriate to address it per business when so much of the town doesn't have parking to begin with, that you have to address it in a different way, and I think that's something that it's on the agenda in some format mm -hmm. to talk about. We do have a, Ray, you had a question or call? Yeah, some of my fellow commissioners have been echoing what uh, I'm thinking and haven't said yet. Um, yeah, I agree that, um, see what I'm seeing is that the vision of some of the new business owners in Ojai 
are um, ahead of the curve of where our policies are. So definitely not to penalize them. Look at it as an opportunity that we're in transition and our policies need to grow into where the businesses are. Because, yes, in it, in it, there will be a temporary condition where there might be something happening at the same center and there will also be 50 people at the restaurant. Okay, there's an opportunity. Where can we, how can we create downtown area, which I've been saying for 20 years, more pedestrian friendly and bike friendly and encourage people to, to park outside? And where can we create parking? Is that at Chaparral? Is that somewhere else that we can have parking and people uh, meander into town, right? So I, I see these types of situations as an opportunity to grow and transition with the consciousness of the business owners that are opening up the businesses. And we need to catch up with them with our policies. I'd be glad to weigh in on this. <laughs> Go ahead, Rick. Go ahead. And regarding the amplified music, I don't want to overregulate that. And it's not just because I love music and I play music. I noticed uh, Papa Lennon had a situation where a neighbor complained and they were not allowed to have a amplified music anymore on their patio. And I love outdoor. If the restaurant has a patio, I'm outside. I'd much prefer eating outside. Even if it's raining, if there's an umbrella, I'm outside. And um, so they stopped amplifying music. And now I'm noticing that they are having amplifiers there but they're no louder than a stereo would be with recorded music. The, the guitarists are just keeping the amplifiers down. And they're self-regulating, and there's been no complaints. So I believe in self-regulation. I believe in trust of the owners. I believe in that accountability and integrity. I believe exactly what Peggy said, that you know, if we can't work things out in this little town, it doesn't give me much hope. Um, I, I just want to address what Ray said. You know, I ran Need Baking Company for the last almost 10 years, and we have a house on the same property that we're about to vacate, and that house is butts up like to the ass end of our store, and whoever has lived there has been one of our best customers. We've gotten along, and I think that's a really nice way to deal with things in a small town to make sure that the people who are butting your property support you and you support them and that you can have a conversation with them. John. <clears throat> I just wanted to point out, I, I appreciate uh, Commissioner Lattice's concern about the parking, but this project is actually ideally situated because there are public parking lots down Matillaha Street. There's the park and ride at Chaparral there's all kinds of street parking, and so I think I don't think that's going to be a problem. Um, I do remember when Theater 150 was there. I think they, the theater sat 120 people or something like that, and uh, they would all come in at one time and leave at one time. And um, I can remember scrambling around to find a parking place, but there were always parking places around there. So I don't see this being a problem, but I appreciate your concern about it in the long run. Oh, I'm just, I'm experiencing an OI synchronicity here. So my friend, Alain Pergo, who, who just text messaged me, who lives in Long Beach, who only comes up here once a quarter, and the only reason he comes up here is to go to Matilla and go to HIP. And every time he text messaged me, he's like, is HIP open yet? Because he comes up from Long Beach to go to Matilla and the HIP. And he just text messaged me. Is that That's a sign? It. I'm going to make a motion. It's a sign. Okay. <laughs> Let's just get Chester, this please. I, and I agree. I'm going to make the motion as is because I do believe in the self-regulation of the music part of it. So I'm not going to make any adjustments to the... Um, and that includes uh, the 10 a.m. to 10 p.m.? Yes, because yeah, yes, I'm, that's, that's I'm, already written as a condition, correct? Number four. Yeah, number four. Okay, so um, I make a motion to approve the conditional use permit CUP 18-003 for the serving of alcohol, conditional use permit CUP 18005 for live entertainment, design review permit DRP 18010 for outdoor dining at HIP 
vegan restaurant in the Village Mixed Use Zone, located at 201 North Montgomery Street. Do we have a second? I will second, second that, but I'd also like to make a comment. I agree with Commissioner Corbin. I don't think we have ever granted a use permit for alcohol. I don't understand why that's on the agenda, but I'm in favor of it, so. Yeah, I'm happy to clarify that point. The code does require CPs for alcohol. It's often done and built into the original approval for the use of the restaurant. I think in this case, they, they divided the two up, hence we're here separately. And that's a relative, one more comment, that's a relatively standard condition in small cities. They want to ensure that alcohol service is available because that's, as we know, what creates a functioning restaurant and the functioning business base, but also ensuring that you get a quality restaurant and not a um, other place. Okay. I just want to say the alcohol board regulates your menu. If you want to get a, a, a permit from them, you have to submit a menu that you actually serve food. Very good. Mm -hmm. Mark? Yes. Jagiello? Yes. Corbin? Yes. Nolan? Yes. Powers? Yes. Lottis? Yes, with reservation. <laughs> the motion Congratulations. passes. Excuse me, we are... Um, going to go to uh, informational items <laughs> and oh yeah can we ask you to um, celebrate in the lobby or outside thank you <laughs> I know everybody gets excited it's cool okay so back to um, Informational item number six, and this is uh, director's decisions. Do we have any questions for staff? Unless there's questions, <laughs> staff doesn't have anything to say. My, okay. my only yes. comment was about um, 111 Blanche Street. Here, John's got a question. Um, is that going to open soon? Is that why they're asking for assignment of addresses and things? Oh, down near the bottom? I don't know if they have an anticipated opening date, to be honest okay. with you, for that. It's an exciting project. I'm yeah. This is, see it. is this the, um, the, the Becker project you're talking it's about? The, yeah. yeah, the old. And what was your question, company. John? Well, I just noticed they applied for addresses for each of the units. And I right, right, right. Probably five years ago, we approved the. I remember. Condo, it's you looking. Know, dividing it up and nice everything. So though, I'm curious there. to see what happens. Yeah, there. it looks good from you know. driving by. I know. <laughs> Okay, any other questions um, on the director's um, decisions? No? Okay, so then let's go on to number seven, which is our um, upcoming meetings and future agenda items. <clears throat> yes, it looks like um, mm -hmm. two weeks from today. I think we only have one thing anticipated right now, which is the Tesla charging station, which is at the Boku site. I'm not sure if there'll be anything beyond that. Mm -hmm. on the okay. agenda at this time, but that's looking fairly certain. Um, I know we have a note for pending projects on the 1202 East mm -hmm. Ohio, but I don't have a date certain for that as well. Yeah, where are we at with, excuse me. Yeah, Chester, please. I'm sorry. <laughs> where are we at with the discussion on the parking? Uh, is there any kind of uh, idea where you see that fitting in uh, it looks like here we're, we still need to get approval from the city council to move ahead with that is that something we can uh, agendize for that um, Tuesday October 16th meeting joint meeting so I think what we have to do I, I d did unfortunately meet or miss our last joint meeting and I believe they went over the um, the pending city council review items the four at the top Mm -hmm. And I don't know if any of these lower ones were actually discussed or um, moved up. Ma no, maybe no. Okay. guide us on that. I mean, those items weren't discussed at that joint meeting, which mostly focused on the code, the broader code uh, adjustment questions and, okay. and general plan update. Certainly the commission could make a recommendation through the director to the council um, uh, to move up the parking item. I, to answer your question, Commissioner Jagiello, the – October 16th joint meeting with the council and this commission is just on the ATP project and has yeah. been yeah. it's been specially noticed as that meeting so I'm not sure that would be the right time to add to it okay. but certainly it could be moved 
I would think you, the, the request can be brought to council. Um, well, you can see how many mm -hmm. times it comes up. It comes up, it comes in up every, all the time. every single yeah. situation. Yeah. And it really has to also ties in with the general plan in a big way. And I think if we can tackle this parking thing, it will also be adding to the work we're going to have to do on the general plan. So, so uh, yep. it just, it just mm -hmm. constantly comes up. I just really would like to have a little bit more right. clarity on that so we can. And I agree. Because you know, um, Catherine brought in some good uh, points. No, I, you know, we, very we valid. definitely need to re-look right. at all the parking. So scenarios. what would the procedure be that could we make a re What do we need to do? <laughs> yes, I would think if that feedback, which is what I'm hearing okay. to me as the director, to elevate this, and I agree mm -hmm. in my time here, we've seldom had individual project right. discussions yeah. where parking, Death changes of use are always up. triggering parking, and my personal observation with the code of OHI is it's out of sync with what you want your community to be. There you go. Mm -hmm. So you have actual code problems that mm -hmm. penalize people trying to use buildings in a rational way that comply with everything but parking. Mm -hmm. And it, we will keep revisiting it. We've had to do variances, which I think would be unnecessary mm -hmm. because the code's not working. Right. So we're having to try to get uses in that the community wants. And that's the back door mm -hmm. to make the parking work. And I'd, I'd prefer to not be doing that. Right. Mm -hmm. right. Um, so, yeah, I think we do need to elevate this. And okay. we also, in the case of things like in Luffy's, thinking mm -hmm. ahead, there's an in exactly. Luffy on the books, but we never collect any. Right. Yeah. Right. And, right. So if there's a need that 20 years down the road, 30 years down the road, which will be the range the general plan's looking at, if we're looking at sites or would mm -hmm. you eventually the have parking. to build structured parking, exactly. we need to identify where those are, what that would cost, and get an in Luffy that gets you there in that time, which yeah. right now is not happening. Exactly. Yeah. So whatever we need to do to move this up um, as okay. sitting in his chair this evening. I would like to see that happen. I also wanted to, did you have a question regarding that item, Ray? Well, and it's all oh. the items. Okay. Um, when I hear uh, Luke say, you know, there's, there's one thing on the agenda and then I see these other things, um, no blame or anything. I'm just saying, well, let's fill those, <laughs> let's elevate, let's fill these things in. Um, because there's the parking's important, uh, the the tree status is important. That I just mm -hmm. found out from Kathy that it ran out and never got renewed when I tree brought City up USA. the Tree City USA. Um, what happened there? Um, and th that's important in terms of creating our microclimate here and addressing climate mm -hmm. change. And so there's there's things I'd like to see if we don't have a lot of uh, uh, desired reviews or any things on the agendas that they just easily council knows and then they they s request that we address them or that we send a request in to to mm -hmm. get those items on the agenda so potentially would you know if we're looking at our list that the city council has recommended for us to review meaning the planning commission i'm not sure if these are listed in order of priority although it does say for us to review on october 9th the code cleanup so i'm assuming Correct. Even though we don't have October 9th here uh, shown on a, as a future item. is That's a city council meeting. So right. they're going to so be looking at it. They would be looking at that and they'll send it in back terms to of us. giving direction to the commission. Okay. Correct. All right. So they'll, we just wait for them to send it back to us, and then we can schedule it in <coughs> as we have time. Um, as uh, Commissioner uh, Powers just said, you know, if we don't have a lot of, on our agenda, we start moving through these items as they assign them to us. Correct. Okay, good. Um, I, I do want to make um, a plug, and I want to get some information. So on October 16th, we have a special joint meeting with the City Council, and it's about the ATP grant. That's the Active Transportation Grant. Being the chair of Complete Streets, I must do this. I know uh, Commissioner Powers is not going to be there, but I'd like to know, is everyone going to be there? I hope so. I'll be there. Good? Yes. Good. Okay, good, because I think it's really important um, for us to weigh in. To me, you know, we're talking about walkability, pedestrian access, reducing traffic and parking. And this is all about um, pedestrian access starting from about Gridley to the Y, the Y to El Robler, and um, on street where possible bike lanes, also street tree plantings, some potential for stormwater capture. Um, it's, it's like the one place, you know, the public right of where we, we can actually really make an impact to our community and contribute to all the things that we've been talking about. And I think this is really important. So 
that's my plug. You know, I don't want to sway anyone's opinion, but I um, encourage us all to show up and pipe in. So I have a question about that. Are the city speed limits part of that conversation? It, it's pretty much a separate art. I know that it was brought up at city council, and I know that I brought it up here um, at the planning commission. I mean, it does tie in with that project, but it's not uh, necessarily, um, you know, on the bigger picture it ties in, but I don't know that it was part and parcel to that. I think that that's, uh, yeah. the, that's the 20s plenty movement brought forward by exactly. uh, council member Francina. Francina. Yeah. And that's set for the council to consider. Okay. Um, I'm not sure the exact date as I see it now, but certainly this fall. Okay, good, good, yeah. But that definitely ties in with all our, our complete streets and just this you know, general picture or vision that we have for the city and safety, health, safety, and welfare. So um, that's good. And I also, I just want to mention one other thing on October 10th. This is not with the city of Ojai, but that's this Highway 33 Multimodal and Community Enhancement Study, Walk and Design Workshop. That's a grant that the county has, and that, and I mentioned it, I think, at a meeting past, but basically it's doing similar to our ATP grant. It's multimodal. Um, starting at um, Casita Springs and then going all the way to approximately Villanova Road or Burnham Road, so into Miramani. And so they're looking at doing, you know, something very similar. And um, I was talking to one of the consultants who happens to be working on the ATP grant and the Highway 33 one, the multimodal one, and he was talking to the Sheriff's Department, and I thought that, I just have to share this because I thought it was wonderful. The Sheriff said, you know, if these two projects go in, so we're basically, we have an anchor as you go into the valley, and then of course here, and then we're gonna have a little gap, Miramani to the city limit, but he's, they're in favor of both projects, and they said, it's just gonna change the environment and slow down traffic. So he said, you know, when somebody gets off that freeway and they come to Casita Springs, they can take a deep breath, and I'm kind of paraphrasing here, and relax, you have now come into the zone, the, va the Ohio Valley zone, which I think is really exciting. So anyway, um, I'm, I plan to attend that, and it's open, it's 6 p.m., it's at the Oakview Resource Center, but just thought I would share that. And of course, there's Ojai Day for anyone who wants to go. And any other comments? Uh, yeah, I have two comments. One is that zone is wonderful. I used to always feel that when I lived deep in Matillaha Canyon, whenever I would enter the canyon, it was mm -hmm. like, ah, oh, I'm out of the big city of Ojai. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. <laughs> right. Um, the other thing I want to mention, which is here, and since you didn't plug it, I will plug it. Oh, good. Um, it's the Sustainable Living Research Initiative with Ben Warner. So this Saturday um, at 3 p.m. is a meeting of the uh, Resiliency and Restoration Council, which is facilitated by the Green Coalition. And um, that's at the, in the community room of Twice Told Tales and, and um, up behind the library. So you go through the library to get to that community room. And Ben Warner is actually going to be there and doing a presentation on the Sustainable Living Research Initiative. So um, if any, was, any of us or uh, anyone who's listening is interested in finding out more about that, he'll be doing a presentation on that. Yeah, 3 p.m. Okay, and then let's go on to number eight, which is our planning commission liaison schedule. Um, it's pretty straightforward, but if anybody has a issue or comment, question, we're all we're good on that. Okay, and then I think our last thing is, I'm gonna flip back this, it's like a big telephone book tonight. Um, this will be our planning commission reports, and so, um, Ray, you've got a report from the uh, city council. I'm going to express some frustration. So I didn't go to the city council meeting. I'm I'm still uh, I'm still functioning by Mayor uh, Johnston's thing of well they're videotaped. Well, you know That's we okay. don't need to go to the meeting. Um, <laughs> but here's my frustration because I went online today um, to look at the minutes of the meeting. I said oh there's minutes I can read them. Well, catch me up. Well, ever since the new videos are there with the indexes, the minutes aren't put online since June. I think the last one was June 26, and I couldn't find it. I called City Hall. I said, are the minutes written in it? Because I can't find them. They said, no, you got to go to the video. So I went to the video, 
and you'll say, okay, I'll click on the indexes and the video indexes for the last meeting were not aligned to what was happening on the video. So I would click on something and it went to another place in the meeting and then I threw my hands up. Okay. That's my report. <laughs> That's your report. So anyone who wants to know what happened at City Council, if you were there, you can Watch please do my report for me or go to the YouTube, Ojai City YouTube channel and you can watch the meeting. Mm -hmm. Matt, I think one more option. Oh. Go ahead, Sherry. <laughs> October 9th is the next City Council meeting and the minutes are on that agenda. You could click on that one. Right oh. There. You could report again <laughs> next time. So I could have gone... Wait, they're on there now? Okay, so I could have gone to the next city council meeting's agenda item on the website, and it would have had the minutes from the meeting that I was Previous. needing to report on. I didn't think of that. I was going to point that out. In most <laughs> uh, most local like governments, have, you know. the minutes are always approved at the next meeting or meeting thereafter. So if you can't find the minutes yeah. on the website, as someone who often is trying to figure out what happened in a meeting that I wasn't present at, not yes. for this client, but for some others, yes. You, the next meeting often will have the minutes, so that's another tool. Okay. As as Ms. Herberg noted. Okay. But uh, the other point can be made to um, mm -hmm. the clerk. Well, yeah, the page that has the minutes on it. Right. Yeah, hasn't the page been that's updated labeled minutes June should perhaps be updated. Yeah. I think that'll that point will be noted to the right people. Okay. Good. All right. So the um, Building Appeals Board meeting was canceled. The MAC meeting was canceled, and we had complete streets today. But I generally, um, you know, we had some of our usual discussions. We were going to go out, and then we thought it was going to rain so we didn't do our field work we, so you should have done it yeah. i know exactly. and it would have started raining yeah. yeah but not enough i mean rain. to validate anyway so i apologize i no, i have to plead guilty good. and yeah um but i did give my two plugs and you know one of them was for us all to to go to the next meeting and what have you and i also like to always announce that we meet the first wednesday of the month here at city hall 2 30 to 4 30 we're open to the public and um uh, Happy for anyone to attend. And so, um, <coughs> our, Bill, you're, are you? Um, yeah, I'll act as substitute liaison. Okay, I, I was just going to ask because I'll go, I don't see Johnny, so come on up. <laughs> A few quick things. Uh, Ray, did you state for the record the time for the meeting on Saturday? Did I state where? Did you state for the record the time for the meeting on Saturday that you were oh, running? I said it, uh, 3 p.m. Okay, it is. BPM. Yeah, okay. I want to make sure that was for the record in case anyone's interested. That's good. Um, I want to put a plug in for um, all of us in the community uh, that have an interest in the atmosphere and character of this valley uh, to get down there for the, um, the meeting in Oakview on the 10th. I think it's important. I mean, I, let's not underestimate what we might be find, seeing here. This is something truly could be really historic in terms of being the valley with no four, no four lanes roads, uh, being the place in Southern California that uses uh, uh, street design for traffic calming, uh, and think about what better way to calm traffic than how to have any four lane roads. Uh, Oak View, I think as a sister community, needs to have its business district revitalized. It was absolutely murdered by four laning through Oakview. I think everyone pretty much agrees with that. Yeah. And uh, I think the uh, economic health and vitality of this community, and I mean that writ large, the entire valley, I, from what I've heard and what I've studied and what I've seen, everything tells me it'd be well served by us committing to this kind of effort um, valley-wide, and it would really help um, I think define ourselves going forward. Um, I, as, as I look at the four laning that was done in these two areas, it was done under the assumptions in, that, that, that were driving bringing a freeway up in here. We rejected that and these are little remnants of that mentality. And um, I, I, I think it's, what, what, it's quite exciting and especially when you see law enforcement and you see this historic shift in Caltrans at the highest level in terms of focusing on walkability and focusing on community character and focusing on roads as not being just a place for cars to go by, but part of the life of the community. Um, I, this is important, and I just would urge anyone in the community that is committed to this idea and this vision uh, to try and, and uh, get down there with Oakview and show support 
And, uh, you know, it's, it's just, I think it's an excellent and important effort. All right. And I just wanted to throw my, my little two bits in on that. Thank you. Just one last comment, because I'm going to agree with you, Bill, 100%. I did go to the first workshop, and I want to say it again. I encourage anyone to go. It's at 6 p.m. at the Oakview Resource Center on Mahoney. Um, and I will say, after attending that first one, I was really excited to be there. Uh, it was a dynamic group of people. There were business owners there. There was a, a good cross-section of the community. Um, Sergeant Town Planning, who was doing our neighborhood planning, is part of this. The grant that they got is actually a Caltrans grant. Um, the Local Government Commission actually is part of that grant. Um, our own Paul Crabtree is one and of the consultants. And their Civic Association down there. The Civic and, Association, yeah. Nelson Nygaard. Yeah. And I was really amazed at um, the excitement and the openness to um, the different possibilities that could happen. They were, uh, actually, I thought that they were a little more um, progressive than Ojai. Yes. Yeah. To tell you the truth. <laughs> well, I, I just but, think it's, it's um, a, anyway, a wonderful coming yeah. together of the entire valley in these two efforts. Exactly. I think. It really, really yeah. is a lot of potential yeah, for that. And we just got that little middle section to work on later on. Right. Okay, right. thanks. So if there's nothing further, meeting adjourned.